Ahoy! <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Wave. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. It's The Wave. It's the weekly news and chat show from the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. Here we are again. More news, more chat, more weeks. More weeks. <laughs> Week two of season eight of Bottom of the Stream. Indeed. Crazy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah? Let's never speak of this again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nick's not good, but we're, we're not going to go into why he's not good on the show. Well, well, maybe I'll pick that one up in, a, in the Discord next week yeah. as a tease for people. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I. you know what? I'm here and I'm excited to be here. Good. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this week's movie on Thursday. Of course. Yeah. Should we start with that? Yeah, let's I do mean, it. I've not asked you how you are, but I'm in That's deep fine, now, I'm so right. we'll come back to that. I'm we'll circle right. back around. <laughs> okay. um, on Thursday, we're going to talk about The Giver. We are indeed. Sounds dirty, but it's not. It does, because <laughs> there are givers and there are receivers in yeah. this movie. <laughs> it made me chuckle a couple of times. <laughs> and it's always said very straight face. It was as well, because the old man was the giver and the young twinky what? boy was the <laughs> receiver. And I'm like, this isn't right. <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, what well, uh, quite the starry movie for this show. Absolutely, the, the probably one of the most starry movies we've uh, done. It seems like quite an interesting story behind it. I think it's certainly one of the most well-known casts for a movie that no one seems to have heard of. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Jeff Bridges is in there. Yeah, Meryl Streep. Meryl nice. Streep is literally the most trophy-laden actress of all time. Yeah. And she's now on this <laughs> bottom of the stream. Alexander Skarsgård's in this. Yeah. Fourth appearance. Katie Holmes. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Brenton Thwaites. I mean, he's there every other week, but yeah. <laughs> it I, appears to be. Quite the cast. Quite the cast. And yet, I'd definitely never heard of it Me before. Me neither. I'd never seen anything about it. No. Even Ross Cook had never heard of it. So, you know it's not famous if he's not heard of it. He's seen every film ever. 2014, I think. So, it's getting yeah, on it was, a bit yeah. as well. Yeah, it's nearly it's eight years old. Um, there's a lot to say about The Giver, so... Yeah, it's going to be a fun episode on, Come back on, on Thursday, Thursday, I think. See what we give it. <laughs> nice. And how well received it was. <laughs> nice. Uh, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. I've uh, I brought a new TV. We've just been admiring your television downstairs. What did they say? A fool and his money are easily parted. By God, though. It Big, looks isn't it? Good. <laughs> it does. It looks really good. I mean, I haven't even seen it in TV mode. I was just <laughs> watching it in like Off art mode. mode. Yeah, it's a Samsung frame. It's 65 inches. It was a, a lovely? Uh, I think it was was it Van Gogh? Yeah, I think it is. It was just one of the free images yeah. that you could put on. I've not really explored what sort of paintings I can put on. It doesn't there. even look like a TV. No. It looks like it's flush to the wall. It's great. I'm sure there's hundreds of people out there I, that have got them, but I'm so happy. Sound investment, I think. The Giver was the you. first thing I watched on it. Oh, <laughs> oh well. The anyway is up. No, I don't mean. Do I give anything away? Uh, yeah. Well, how did it look? It looked great. <laughs> the thing is, though, it's supposed to be really good for like... Films in the dark, so you can make out things in the dark. Well, more. That's good because every then we film watch... film like, is, is it does, in the except dark for now. this fucking one. This one's all in the daytime. There's not hardly any black and white, so I imagine that looked quite it nice. Did, it did look pretty, to be fair. Yeah, I am. Um... Yeah, I'm an idiot. I just like spending money, so I did. It, look, it'll be. No. I've not been on holiday this year. Yeah, exactly. That's my excuse. Yeah. That's how I persuaded my mum that it was a good idea. <laughs> I went around my mum's house because I knew she'd try and talk me out of it. Yeah, and she and was then... just like. But no, she own, did try. She tried her best to talk me out of it. She was like, your mortgage is going to go up. All this. She was giving me all the nagging. But then I ordered it whilst I was there with her. <laughs> so, just don't respect her. And an act of defiance. Yeah, it was. But she's since seen it and thought it was great. So That was my big news <laughs> of the week. <laughs> she's downstairs watching, yeah, uh, she's watching Death Coronation Rafa. Street. <laughs> Coronation yeah. Street. Is that, do they still make that? Yeah, they're all in the jungle though, aren't they? So. Oh, are they? Okay. Oh, that program's changed since I last Um Okay, that's fine. What else? What about last week's show? Last week's movie, first episode of first season episode eight. of season. Are you having issues with your mic? Yeah, I right? just feel like I'm crouching a bit. Yeah, you Don't are. Worry. You I'll, a bit I'll sort now. it out. Cool. Um, the first episode of season eight was the cleanse, the cleanse or the master cleanse. Also, quite a starry lives. movie. I feel like we've been blessed yeah. with the star names so far. We have. Season so eight. tonight's going to be the starry season. Obviously. Johnny Galecki, mm. and for real, like I just got home. I don't get that. It's the Madonna song. Oh, okay. You put it in the show notes, and I was like, I don't understand that joke. You don't get it now. Ray of Light. Is it Ray of Light? Yeah. Yeah. The Anna Friel song. <laughs> I've literally been saying that joke for two weeks, and probably every... every and I've just been going, it's yeah! It's only me that's been <laughs> yeah. getting amusement I've just been it. nodding at you every time so. you do it. <laughs> yeah, oh, the cleanse is an interesting one. 
the, the, with it being the first film of the season, it's the one we have to compare for the next few weeks, everything that uh, comes after. I, I do think, on after a few more days of reflection, I I think I liked it a bit. I've liked it a bit more since we recorded the episode. Okay. I, st- I still think all the faults that I sort of we were valid. out are valid. Yeah, I think you say. But it was a real interesting little film. It really was. It really was. Uh, we, had, we did have a bit of feedback in the Discord. Did we? Yeah, I think it was Ross who said... Um, he he also enjoyed the giver. No, yeah. not the giver. That's this week. He also enjoyed the cleanse. Yeah, but kind of felt like it was. I think we said it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just, just ended. It just ended. And we said, well, we kind of wanted to, to know what happened next after their yeah. escape. How did these people? That was my, one of my biggest in issues. Real world, and that, and that was pretty much the same thing. It's yeah. like I felt like the third act was missing. Yeah, uh, and I didn't want this film to be another forty minutes long. But I don't know. Yeah, I do <laughs> agree. I agree too. Yeah, it, it needed more. Yeah, so, but I think it was an okay start. Yeah, it was. Season. It was. It, it's a good season opener. It's one. Yeah. It's a good one to use for comparison. It's for a next benchmark. Few weeks. Yeah, a good exactly. Benchmark. It's a good benchmark. I think it'll probably end up middle table somewhere. We'll see. Hopefully, but we'll see. We might be in for we, a treat. We do not know in which way the uh, Robin the Randomizer will work. We do not. Or the wild cards. We don't know where they're going to go this yeah, season. Very true. It's five wild cards very now. True. Depends if. I've not quite decided yet. I haven't. I've had to uh, take the. I'm going to find a good film or the self combustible route <laughs> and just <laughs> just watch a film that you want to watch. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I've done the last few years. I feel terrible. like this season I might try and pick one that might win, but we'll see. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a fun season, I think. Right, shall we get on with some Netflix news? Let's do it. What have we got? To it. Uh, do you know what? Not the busiest week of no, news. No, it's been a quiet week, hasn't it? I've thought that. But we've still got still found some. quite a few things to go through. No, there isn't. Specifically, there's not much Netflix news. Okay. Uh, but plenty of uh, streaming and movie news. Let's start with sports. Sports? We're not a sports cast. <laughs> we can talk a bit about sports. If Netflix are involved in sports. Yeah. Uh, you it doesn't know, happen very often. But... I mean, it doesn't. But... We know that Netflix have done very well out of F1 with yes. Drive to Survive. Absolutely. That's a real cult show. It is. Uh, and it's it's emerged this week. I think we kind of knew this might be in the cards anyway, because obviously Amazon Prime have got deals with the NFL, with the, the yep. English Premier League to show certain matches. Uh, the Netflix have sort of said they're looking actively now offering live sports oh, okay. on their platform but that's a real change in direction they're, they're looking to go a bit more niche because oh. they don't want to get in like these big multi-million and billion dollar bidding wars okay so you, you're probably not going to see like the premier league or the nfl on netflix uh, because they've <laughs> actually just pulled out of talks because they couldn't agree a deal to buy the world surf league <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I, I've never watched surfing, uh, but if it pops up on Netflix, I might do. Yeah. If we're going for this sort of niche sport, I'd say do it. I'm all in. It's a proper skill, surfing. Uh, Netflix has reportedly held discussion into lower profile leagues and sports in an attempt to avoid high costs of uh, streaming rights and video. Yeah. Wars. Um, yeah. They uh, they did apparently bid for the last uh, round of Formula One rights for the for the US. Okay, but they lost out to ESPN. Right, uh, and it is said they may be in the running for uh, the Women's Tennis Association rights. Right, out of the UK. Okay, and that's interesting. Um, just give us what we all want. Give us the surfing. They don't even do like live TV shows. No. And yet they're trying and, to. And how many live times sport. have we said you could put all your your to dumb stuff live, live just on the main yeah, page? Yeah, exactly. They don't even do that. They just uh, want to get everywhere, don't they? But they don't. They never do anything. They never go full in on anything. They always have little bits of everything. Yeah. Uh, a source says that some Netflix Netflix executives believe they should turn to some lesser known sports and help turn them into successful franchising thanks to the size of the Netflix Netflix platform. And even create their own sporting tournaments or events. Maybe they just make their own sport. Sure. 
Yeah, just make <laughs> make just invent a sport. Yeah, why not? I know a sport that they should take. Go on, because I occasionally this would be a good real talk. <laughs> yeah, all right, brilliant. <laughs> I occasionally see clips of this on my social media, uh, but you know it probably is shown somewhere. It definitely feels like it would be on like ESPN eight. Okay, go on. The World Tag League. I've seen a few of them where they're like obstacle courses yeah. trying to tag each other. Yeah. Tag each other. Yeah, definitely. That's I'd watch on Netflix. That. I'd watch the hell out of that. Yeah. I always used to enjoy as well. There used to be, I can't remember what channel it was on, but it was like drone racing. Yes. Flying drones yeah. around abandoned buildings definitely. and stuff. I'd watch that. Huh? Yeah. Shit like that. That's, or like, I don't know, stock car racing. All sorts of weird shit going on. There's loads of go karts. Weird sports. Soapbox you can get. derbies. Yeah, why not? Yeah, loads. Some shit we've never even heard of, yeah. probably. Like you say, invent something new. Yeah, Netflix invent a sport. Sponsors Fireball. <laughs> Joey Tribbiani's Fireball or something. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. We've got two real talks out of Invent a sport <laughs> and which sport should Netflix uh, take on. That's the next two real talks. I, I mean, Netflix shows the Office Olympics. Yeah. It'd be brilliant. It came out. Well, look for it. Okay, some actual proper Netflix news. Okay. Uh, is that uh, Netflix have commissioned uh, a movie version of Seesaw Monster. Okay, what's that? Uh, it's, well, Seesaw Monster is a book which right. was written by uh, the Japanese writer Kataro Isaka. Okay. Uh, most famous for uh, the book Maria Beetle. Now, Maria Beetle, you may not have heard of. No, I but haven't. it uh, it was the inspiration behind a movie that came out this year, which I believe you may have seen at the cinema. Okay. Do you know? Do you want to have a guess? I would say in the last three months. Smile. No. Oh. An action movie. An action movie. I went to the cinema. To see. I'm sure you said you went to the flick. The cinema. The flicks. To see <laughs> <it>. the flicks. <laughs> Back in the nineteen twenties. <laughs> um. Go on. Uh, it's it's the same author behind the book uh, that inspired the movie Bullet Train. I did go and see Bullet Train. Yeah, thought you did. Shouldn't have known that. It was Japanese, wasn't it? <laughs> Should have known that. Uh, it's a good yeah. film as well. Yeah, I see, it. see, I think see it's saw, on Amazon now. Seesaw Monster is a action comedy. Uh, I like the which name. Will Star Anne Hathaway. Oh, nice. And Salma Hayek. Cool. That's a name you don't hear of very often. Um, it's uh. There's no no detailed synopsis of, of the movie. Obviously, it's a book. Uh, the book is uh, set in the future, and it's about a wife who starts to question her mother-in-law's past. Oh, right. Mother-in-law's, hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, once she discovers the secret, all hell breaks loose. Um, the script, script is going to be <laughs> written by Olivia Milch, who is behind the Ocean's 8 movie. Okay. A couple of years ago, uh, which would reunite her with Anne Hathaway. Yeah, I'll say it wasn't Anne Hathaway in that. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. I mean, that sounds good. Seems like quite a good, solid career path, doesn't it? You know, yeah. if, if you, you're out of the limelight for a bit, come back and do a cool action movie. You know? Yeah, why not? Do it. I'm all for it. Especially see, if it's see, as good as Bullet. Monster. Bullet Train's a lot of fun. So if it's as good fun as that, we're in for a treat there. Okay. Let's do a couple of uh, Disney Plus. Bits of news. Okay. And let's start with a, uh, again, a, a bit of a tip off that's come out this week to Variety, hmm. which is that Disney Plus is in the very early stages of developing an Indiana Jones TV show. Oh. A couple of th- things spring to mind for me there. Go on. Why is it taking this long? I was Yeah, I was just <laughs> going to say, that's one of the biggest franchises. <laughs> and... Uh, also, why are we doing it? Because do you remember that there actually was an Indiana Jones TV show back in like the 90s? Yeah. Young Indiana Young Jones. Young Indiana it Jones. It was pretty good from yeah, it what was, I remember. Yeah. George Lucas like wrote most of the episodes himself. Did he? I, so, I yeah. know that. Uh, I haven't watched that show for years and Is years. Is it on Disney Plus? I have no idea. I bet it is. I, I, I don't know, actually. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, again, sort of rumours flying around. Because Harrison Ford has said, I'm not doing any more of this shit after... The movie we've just finished after my ninetieth birthday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so whether this TV show could spin off of something of the movie that comes out next year, possibly. Yeah. Uh, or whether it's it's you know an, a, another version of the Young Indiana Jones. Yeah, we'll, do a prequel, we'll sequel. 
Can't what? do a sequel. You've got a hundred year old. It Indiana does Jones. kind of feel like, doesn't it? Oh well, if Disney have got Indiana Jones, well, just why not do it? Well, yeah, why has it not to do been something done already? With it, yeah. We've got like fifteen Star Wars series. So. Yeah, they even did a Mighty Duck series. Two. The second one's just oh, is it? hit or just about to, I think. Sweet. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, kind of surprising, oh. possibly. Um, I can only read this website if that, I pay a pound. I'll just try and remember. I don't what, want to pay a pound. What I read earlier that Disney Plus's uh, basically yearly financials came out this week. Okay. Um, and do you think? I'll give you an easy question first. Go on. Did Disney Plus make a profit or a loss? I would financial year? hope they made a profit. No, they didn't. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I thought you would get that easy. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't know much about money, did, as I've just not. proven. Well, my, my more complicated question was going to be... Um, Watch me get this one right. <laughs> how much of a loss do you think they made? Um, 500 million. Uh, t- triple it. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. One and a half billion. Loss, on Dis- just on Disney Plus? Yeah. Shit. Uh, they aim to turn a profit. <laughs> I bet they're well, yeah. By... <laughs> 2024, which would be quite the turnaround. That would be quite the turnaround. Uh, and basically, Disney are saying that um, this loss wasn't unexpected uh, because of all the money we've thrown at every. Franchise. Exactly, <laughs> we're developing a new. We're developing content yeah. and producing content for what is still a relatively new service. Yeah, definitely, and still um, fledgling, isn't it? They should spend some money on a better interface. I agree. Disney inter- Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. Because that thing <laughs> is Disney not intuitive. It's terrible. And it's really unresponsive. It really is. And it doesn't tell you what anything is. No. You just have to rely on the posters. I don't think this is a difficult thing to do. I don't either. Mm. Amazon's isn't great either. No. But it's better, but than, it's better than Disney+. Plus. Netflix is, is the best. And that's, not a, that's not a bias, but Netflix is, is the best. I find, yeah, uh, well, certainly with mine, I get the problem that you you click something on Disney, it will take a long time. Oh, I, I know you shouldn't click again, but you yeah. do, and then, then you just you end up eight clicks in, and yeah. nothing's working, and, and you still don't know what you've clicked on because <laughs> no. it's just loads of posters. Yeah, I, spend some money on that. And also, another, I don't know if this happens with yours. I, I the Nick pick for me for Disney <laughs> Plus is when you might be say you're 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 halfway through a series, yeah. you've left. I finished episode five last night. Yeah. Tonight I'm going to start episode six. Uh, episode six. I'll I'll go back into the app, switch it on, and it auto plays me episode one. Oh, I've not come across that. Mine usually plays the end of episode five again. Okay. <laughs> Which is random. And it'll still say you've still got your little bar saying that you've watched well, that's one to five. That would annoy. But me. then you've got to do more clicks and get it sorted out. It's um. It's bullshit. Yeah. Be better, Disney Plus. So, I know Stop you, losing so I know much. You're money. a little baby streaming service, but you, it's, it's Disney. It's, yeah, he's still one of the biggest companies in the world. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, the rest of uh, putting Disney Plus aside, Disney made something like two hundred trillion dollars. Yeah, last year stupid, it's like it's a drip in, drop in the ocean for them. But okay. I mean, best story of the week for me. This is go on. Over the years, we've seen a lot of biopics. I love a good biopic. Uh, did you say biopic or biopic? I say biopic, but I feel like a lot of people do say biopics now. I don't know what's right. I've, I've heard the biopic word too sounds much. better though, doesn't it? I think in real life you'd say biopic. Biopic. I wouldn't. But I feel like if I am talking about biopic, it's a pic. It's a picture. It's a moving pic. Biopic. Bio, biopic. It's pics you right. Bios you getting wrong. <laughs> biopic. It's not. It's not a biography, is it? I don't know now. I've said it too much. I know it's lost all meaning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's biopic. Very confused. Anyway, uh, <laughs> a biopic is on the way for none other than Snoop Dogg. Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, wow. and one of the best parts about it is he's involved in the project. Of course he is. Is he playing himself? <laughs> I would love that. I think if he plays like older Snoop Dogg, yeah. I'd be on board with that. Or like a narrator. Yeah, okay, <laughs> fine. fine. Narrating his life. Like, oh, what was the show called that Chris Rock did? Everybody Hates Chris. He used to narrate his own show, didn't he? <laughs> he did, he did. So Alan Hughes uh, is 
overseeing this movie. So with he 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 back in the day uh, directed a couple of movies with his brother Albert. They both directed Menace to Society, okay, uh, and the Book of Eli in the right. past. The script for this uh, biopic is written by Joe Robert Cole, who wrote the first Black Panther, um, right and Snoop has said he is granting full access to his music library. And he's got a, he's got a producer credit on there as well, um, and he's he's released a statement. Okay, I'm I'm not going to try and imitate the guy. <laughs> Good, because I think that would probably get us cancelled. Uh, Maybe you. <laughs> but Snoop says I've waited a long time to put this project together because I wanted to choose the right director, the perfect writer, and the greatest movie company I can partner with who can understand my legacy that I'm trying to portray on screen and the memory I am trying to leave behind. This is the Perfect marriage. It was holy matrimony, not holy macaroni. I d- don't know why he said that. A bit weird, but it's Snoop Dogg. It's so Snoop Dogg. You, Say what he wants. Um, yeah, brilliant. That's that's a great idea. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm well on board. Me too. I'm up for that. Looks a bit old in that picture, doesn't he? Snoop Dogg. Yeah, he's getting on a bit. It looks like... He's not had the easiest paper round either. The director looks like a younger version of him. It looks like someone's <laughs> put an old filter on the director. <laughs> Next. Before I get myself cancelled. Uh, what's what's the one thing Dwayne The Rock Johnson's not really got? Talent? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, no. Right. I, I, okay. Let's, let's explore that. I don't believe that either. I, I think he, he has got talent. Of course he has. He's got a career. Yeah, yeah. I do feel, though... That similar to how at the start of this year I felt we were reaching the Ryan Reynolds horizon. Yeah, we are right on, if not just tipping over the Dwayne the Rock Johnson horizon. Yeah, I think I think Black Adam might have been that horizon because I think objectively, I don't think he turns out. I'm not saying terrible just... stuff. No, but just... I think. You know, come on, yeah. bit bang average, and I don't think he gets challenged. No, he, d- he never challenges himself. At He's all. literally just he plays. He wears the same T-shirt in most films. He does. <laughs> he was just churning out movie after movie. It's great. Well, he's not got a Christmas movie. Not yet. Well, he has now because he's oh, just. Okay. Well, he will have because he just started work this week uh, on, um, something that is either called Untitled Holiday Family Film, <laughs> which won't be obviously. What I would love it if it was called that. Or Red One, because okay. that's the f- sort of filming name for this project, right? Uh, which is an awful title, and you've already got a franchise called Red Notice, so don't make one called Red One. Yeah. It's, I don't like it. I'd like to think that this, before you tell me what this film's about, right? Okay. I think this is a Santa as a, like, superhero pilot type guy's. And he's like his his code name is Red One. Okay, you know what I mean, like yeah, like, yeah, because that could be like the Slay's name. Yeah, Red One. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Am uh, I right? But Dwayne Johnson is well. There aren't many details. Okay, so I don't act. I can't actually confirm if he is playing Santa, right? Or if he will be like handed the mantle of Santa. Okay, but we have got a bit of a cast list for this, and it is quite the cast. Okay, Dwayne Johnson. Really? Chris Evans. Oh, which one? The uh, guy who did TFI Friday? The, the Captain America one. Okay. Uh, and announced as playing Santa Claus, Yeah. J.K. Simmons. Oh, interesting. Uh, with Bonnie Hunt as Mrs. Claus. Bonnie Hunt? Where have they dragged yeah. her up from? I haven't heard that name for Just cut her out years. of the jungle in Jumanji. <laughs> uh, also in the cast, Lucy Liu uh, and Nick Kroll. Oh, okay. Interesting. Hmm. I think there's going to be some sort of comedic mismatch buddy thing going on between. The I Rock still and think Chris Red Evans. One is a code name for Santa. That's my. I think one or one or both of them ends this movie as Santa. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. is my prediction. Yes. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know one of the things I think I find objectionable about the Rock. Not about him personally, but one of the things that annoys me is really summed up in the tweet for this movie. Yeah. Cool. Which which is basically him saying so there's a picture of, of 
of The Rock and Chris Evans on set. It looks like they're in a toy store or something. Oh, yeah, something like that. And, and it, it, I'll read it out. And The Rock says, oh, hey, it's Chris Evans and the fella famous for wearing a fanny pack. Meaning no. himself. Okay. Because of that photo when he was young, I guess. Yeah. With the... 25 with the years ago polo now, neck in, which feels a bit niche, but there you go. Yeah. He says, Christmas comes early as we kick off production for our Christmas franchise, Red One. It's the word franchise. I just like... Just is, make a good film. Yeah. Don't worry about building a franchise. I don't think you can make and a Christmas film now. That annoys me. I don't think you can make a Christmas film now without making a Christmas film franchise. But everything doesn't have to be a franchise. No. We I think use when it, it comes all to the Christmas time, films, a shared I universe or a, a multiverse or a, yeah. The Rock would just like, I think, four films just rotate yeah. franchise. You know, because we've seen, we've talked about just, it with Red yeah. Notice. It's yeah, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. Yeah, he just makes the same the film every year, just the same four films yeah. every year. It's like, that's my Netflix franchise. Yeah. That's my superhero franchise. This is my Christmas my franchise. Christmas. I don't think you can make a Christmas film without making a franchise these days. I think every Christmas film always ends up with a sequel and a prequel. So. Everything doesn't have to, people. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I agree. Uh, oh, and it also says at the bottom of the tweet, I missed the bit at the end. It <laughs> says that the film's directed by Jake, Jake Kazdan. In brackets, Jumanji franchise. Just in case you don't know who he is. <laughs> There's also a Prime Video tagged into it. So, it's yeah. where that's heading. Oh, there you go. So, he's got his fingers in all the streaming pots. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? Well, you can do what you want when the, when you're the rock. Kind Wait, of. yeah, of course you can. Okay, sorry. Rant over. Uh, <laughs> talking of franchises that will not die, <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I d- I d- <laughs> don't know how some of these people have enough time to work. Because uh, this is a really busy guy. I'm talking about Sean Levy. We appear like... This picture of him appears on our show every week. I know. He's, he, we talk about him all the time. Who, who also is obviously big in with Netflix. He's he's a producer of Stranger Things. Yep. He's directed numerous episodes of it. He's directing at least one episode of the final season of it. Um, He directed uh, The Adam Project yeah. this year on Netflix. He that directed Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. There's the last couple of movies, but it pretty much came out back to back. His next movie is also with Reynolds because he's on board for Deadpool 3. Yep. He's now in talks and links uh, with a... Well, he's uh, let me let me get the, the words right. Uh, <laughs> Levy has confirmed that discussions are underway between him and Disney for him to direct a Star Wars movie. Right. <laughs> cool. But it's just like other we can give other people jobs. Yeah, this guy's got his life set up now for like five years, so he doesn't need to do a Star Wars. No, movie. I mean, look, I'm not. I don't want to criticize too much because, like, when you're hot, you're if hot. someone comes and says, "Hey, do you want to do a Star Wars movie?" That's probably yeah, of course I do. <laughs> well, who doesn't? I grew up watching that yeah. shit. Every filmmaker of this generation would want to do it. But, but again, I'm just trying to be a little bit objective. Yeah. I thought Free Guy was really bad. Free Guy was fun, but it wasn't great. Uh, I, ugh, I no. <laughs> I thought the Adam Project was better. I enjoyed the Adam Project. I thought that was good. Not but, just because it's got the name in the title. But he's still sort of pretty bubblegum and yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Strange Things is good, but he's Strange part, he's part of that crew. Yeah. The Deadpool franchise is great. I d- uh, yeah, this guy's got his life set up now for the next five years. Yeah. Well, that Stranger Things finale won't come for another five years, so... Yeah, exactly. And Deadpool 3's not even started filming. No. Now he's got a Star Wars film. There's another thing here as well. All the light we cannot see. He's doing some episodes of that. Yeah. So... Well, that, yeah, that's the, same, that's the same production company, I think. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. Some people just don't like sleeping, do they? <laughs> to be fair, he looks like he doesn't like sleeping. He has got a bit of Tim Burton about him, hasn't he? <laughs> he has a bit. Good luck to you, Sean. Yeah. I don't care about Star Wars. I tell you what you might care about. Go on. Uh, this final piece of news. Just uh, we're coming away from streaming again after the last last couple of bits of news. Viola Davis. I do care about. I love Viola Davis. I think I've Fantastic seen actress. Yep, she's incredible. Uh, probably most recently seen in The Woman King. Yeah, I've still not seen that. I need to uh, watch that when it comes out somewhere. She's signed up for a new action movie. Okay. A lot yeah. of action movie. She's news following the whole. Anne Hathaway, Brad Pitt, yeah. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, you know, come back with a badass action movie. Uh, an action movie called G20. What do you think G20 is about? Uh, climate Summit? Yeah. Oh, is it? 
<laughs> she's going to play the US president. Right. Uh, and the story is set at the G20 summit, <laughs> which is overtaken by terrorists. Oh. And uh, Viola Davis plays the president named Taylor Sutton, who is ex-military, and she must bring all her military experience to bear to defend her family, her fellow world leaders, and, of course, the whole world. <laughs> So his president has to do some badass fighting. Yeah. Cool, okay. It's like Air Force One, remember that? Yeah. And Harrison Ford had to take down all the terrorists. <laughs> cool. I I'm, can see her playing I the president. Print. I think she'd be good at yeah. that. Yeah. She's mean, a badass fighter, we know this. Exactly. I mean, it's more realistic than, uh, or more believable rather than thinking like old Joe Biden could take down a load of terrorists <laughs> that happened to him i'd love that that's a much <laughs> better film you could get that harrison would, ford to play that would be brilliant. <laughs> i'd be up for that we'd have to de-age harrison ford though to play joe biden yeah, probably <laughs> i don't know why i'm taking shots at harrison oh, ford or joe I biden love, i love harrison ford <laughs> yeah, i'm fine with joe biden <laughs> look I do, look yeah i, just, I mean fair enough set it at the g20 summit don't call it g20 <laughs> it's not a great name is no. it no it's like your bingo numbers <laughs> But it's gonna you're gonna if you call it that you're gonna have to give it some sort of crazy environmental message and there's gonna have to be all sorts of shit going on. Just call it the fight at the summit. Fight at the summit. <laughs> Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Don't call it G twenty. All the president's right. dead. <laughs> that's a great title. <laughs> I want like that's more like that sounds more like a zombie movie set at the G twenty yeah, summit. True. When all the world leaders turn into zombies. Yeah. Does that hap- that might have happened? We might be onto something there. If it hasn't, we can make it. It feels like it has just lately. <laughs> yeah. That's all the news. Good news um, work. <laughs> it's got... Have you watched anything good at the top of the stream? Uh, I've watched a couple of things. Okay. I've watched the first two episodes of Blockbuster. I finished it. Oh, did you? I did all, I've done all ten episodes this week. Can I be honest? Yeah. I feel like I'm being really negative this week. <laughs> Not sure whether to go back. Th- that's fair. And I didn't dislike it. It might be partly my fault of having high expectations because I really like everyone who's in it. And yeah. it's the team behind Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Superstore, both of which I loved. Yeah. I've got to say the first two episodes didn't really grab me. I know what you mean. Should I stick with it? I, I thought it was fine, but I didn't really laugh. Yeah. I mean, it and comes it, with saying it's made by the same people as Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Superstore. It's nothing like them. It's nothing like yeah. them and it is nowhere near as good as them. And, but it comes with that stigma now attached to it. Like exactly. It's got to Don't be as sell good it as that. As that if it's maybe. not as good as that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. I I get what you mean. It's nothing It's nothing out of the ordinary. It was just easy to stick on and watch. Yeah. I would say, yeah, stick with it. It doesn't get much better than what it is. Okay. Um, but there's, there's funny bits in it. Randall Park's great. Randall he, Park's he's, great. He's a really good leading man. Yeah. I just... Yeah, it just didn't quite click. No, it's fair enough. In the first two. It's, it's, but it's it was easy, an easy watch. It's an yeah. easy watch. And I just chucked it on and watched it yeah i can't i can't remember much about what happened right now to be honest <laughs> but i do feel as well that like jb smooth is just he's over he's another one he's just overdone he's yeah. just the same part in everything yeah absolutely look he credits you making a career some of the younger right. cast are really good yeah the um the young guy from he was an american vandal that sort of thing yeah i can't remember his name i apologize but he was really good in it the two younger girls in it the girl who's played she's like a tiktok because she's fantastic yeah but yeah, it's it's nothing. It's not gonna. There's no way it will get a second season. No, I don't think it's so. the, it's, it's prime for a Netflix cancellation, a hundred percent. So it's up to you. Stick with it if you want. It's easy to stuck on when you just want twenty minutes to turn cool. your brain off. Uh, the other thing I've watched, and I know this has been on Netflix for quite some time, but finally got around to it. Is uh, you know I love a sports documentary, I probably do. more than proper sports. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've I, watched I, stuff about them. Than yeah, them. yeah, yeah. True. Uh, and I really love a basketball documentary. I finally got around to watching The Redeem Team on okay. Netflix. Which I think, did we talk about this a while back? I think we talked about it. It was coming. Yeah. So it's the story of the, the 2008 um, uh, US basketball team. Yeah. Um, Any good? It's brilliant. Is it really? Yeah. It's fast, absolutely fascinating. Yeah, all right. Because it's like, it's, um, you know, all these young guys like, well, they were young back then, like LeBron James and Dwayne Wade trying to, you know, get revenge for for last time out and then kobe bryant just sort of strolls in and they're like oh, this guy's like the big shots fucking a fucking yeah how's this gonna work with all of us here and then it's just this is the story of how they integrate him and all oh, right 
I might know, check that out. Go on to this. I, I thought it was really, I literally really interesting. Next to nothing about basketball, so yeah. it'll be quite interesting. Um, hmm, I might check that out. It's an hour and a half. Yeah, really interesting documentary. I would recommend. Cool. Anything else? That's all I've watched this week. How about you? Uh, like I say, I finished Blockbuster. I also finished season six of Big Mouth. Yeah. It's a standard show. It's, Big Mouth's just at that plateau now. Right? It's, okay. just, it's just good. Is it... Is this like its last season or is it? Has there been no... I don't know if it's been confirmed okay. either way yet. They did a couple it... of spin-off shows Yeah, I was well. going to say that. I'd never watched that. Um, but And it does reference that in the first episode because one, the, one of the main characters starts off pregnant in the series. Yeah. And it's not explained in the show, but then he's like, well, maybe you should have watched Human Resources. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it is what it is. It's six seasons in now. It knows what it's doing. Yeah, exactly. Um... I haven't watched a lot. I did watch the first episode of Drink Masters. I need to do that. You do need to do that. Yeah. I've only seen the first one. I enjoyed it. Good. There was two reality shows I wanted to start, but I didn't want to watch both of them. Okay. So I watched the first episode of both of them in one night. Right. And Drink Masters is the one I will carry on with. Cool. What was the other? The pizza one on Disney Plus. Don't... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, it called? I've, I'd, I know, I've seen it pop up. It's got yeah. a pun name and I can't remember what yeah. it is. It's, that's not for me. Okay. That I thought that was going to be professional pizziolas making pizza. Sure. And it isn't. It's amateur. And it's different categories. It's like the first episode's all, na- all nuns making right. pizzas. As in grandmas? Yeah. <laughs> Nonnas, they call them in Italian. So they're all coming in making pizzas. And then it's the best one of them. So they're all amateurs. Got and I wanted more professional. Yeah. So was, but yeah, I think I'll stick with Drinkbusters. Although, I don't want to go to any of their bars. They get 90 minutes. To make, a, to drink. make a drink. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, the, the, the challenge is <laughs> you've got 90 minutes, make us a drink. It was like, it was a martini, I think. Yeah. So, yeah you, go, you've got 90 minutes. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure the, they do some flashing editing to make it, make it uh, intense and stuff. But yeah. Um, okay, fine. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> a bit weird. The guy who hosts it, and they're like 50 minute episodes as well. Yeah, the guy who hosts it is the best dressed man on TV though. I can't, I don't know his name, but he's okay. He's suave. There's a couple. I want to check that out. And I also want to check out. And again, it might be a bit similar to you. I'll try them and see see which one if yeah one wins out or end up watching them both. I always want to check out the Easy Bake Oven show. <laughs> I've that's, seen that on that's there. That's on yeah. Netflix. That, well. That's not for me. I don't think, but it um, could be quite funny. Yeah, the FIFA Uncovered documentaries come out this week. That's yes. supposed to be really good. A couple of people at work were talking about it today. Yeah, I, need so I might to check, check that out at some point. Well, we move on to a different sport. My next document. <laughs> just come, just keep uh, watching documentaries. And then the crown is out as well. Which the crown is out as well. I may dip into. I might do. Point, I've I've missed the last two not, seasons of the crown, but I feel like it, not as a I feel like when top of the. You can skip list. bits of the crown, can't you? And just sure. dip in and out of it. Yeah. Especially now, it's a whole new cast for this season. Yeah. Yeah, that's out. Enola Holmes two's out. There's quite yeah. a lot of stuff out there now. Yeah. I've noticed as well today. Um, Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson's not newest film but the one before that has just appeared on netflix oh cool synchronicity yes Syn- something along those lines i think yeah. it's called that's appeared on netflix today synchronic I synchronic i think that's yeah. what it's called so i'm gonna check that i'll check that out over the weekend so i will as well two guys good D- that's it i think i don't think i've seen anything else if i have i'll interrupt you at some point later on fine <laughs> should we go through the netflix top 10 yeah let's do that we haven't done that for a few weeks have we so netflix top 10 of movies in the english language in the week of this week is <laughs> number 10 the curse of bridge hollow that was that halloweeny movie that came out uh, my family have watched that have they well i don't know if my wife has my children have watched it any good uh my my eldest said she she enjoyed it good yeah is that eric Cantona? <laughs> looks like him no i don't believe it is <laughs> number nine is oblivion random old tom cruise movie random old tom cruise movie indeed uh number eight is enola holmes yes the original because the sequel's just come out. It has, yeah. That's uh, Millie Bobby Brown's movie. Franchise. It's a franchise now. Of course. She's got her own franchise. Yeah. Another one. Hotel Transylvania 2 is at number seven. And Bad Guys is at number six. Pretty good film, that. I think I mentioned that. Yeah, you did. That's yeah. two animations next to each other. Five. Wild is the Wind. Any ideas what Wild is the Wind is? No, it kind of looks like a homeless Tiger Woods. <laughs> Stars it like a homeless tiger. I, homeless tiger I, do, I do not know what movie, what this movie is. I don't either. It's second week in the charts, though, so it's doing all right. Uh, number four is a movie called War. I believe that is Jet Li versus Jason Statham. That is both of those people in that poster, so I think you are correct. <laughs> How old is that then? That's got to be cool. yeah, got to be quite old. Three, the School for Good and Evil. 
uh, we've talked about this on the show a few times. Yeah. I know two people have watched it and said it was dreadful. Okay. So this is one where like two will. princesses, uh, one of them goes to, they go to the wrong, wrong school. One yeah, of the, the wrong good. school, the school they didn't expect to yeah, go to. Yeah, one goes basically. to the good school, one goes to the evil yeah. school. Uh, number two is The Good Nurse. I thought this was a TV show and it's not, it's a shit, it's a film. It's Eddie Redmayne, isn't yes, it? Yes, a lot of people at work are talking about this as well, so uh, it's supposed to be good. It doesn't really appeal to me for some reason, I don't know why. No, me neither. Shit poster as well. And uh, number one is Enola Holmes 2. Have you got to that yet? Are you uh, going to get to it? I, I was working. And On it? <laughs> no. This last week. Anyway, they watched it without me. So no, I've not seen oh. it. Your family then. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Either. Uh, I, I, I was told it was good. I will get to it. But I haven't seen I'm it. I'm not. Me too. But I'm not excited to. No, I'm not either. If it's, there's nothing else, I'll watch it. that. TV shows in the English language? TV me. TV me up. Manifest season one is at 10. Okay. That's now been in the charts for 20 I weeks. I want to mention Manifest. Go on. When, probably when Go. you get to the top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine is Killer Sally, which is a limited series. I nearly watched this the other day, but something else came along and I watched that instead. It looks quite good and the post is amazing. So I don't know anything about her, but apparently it's a really interesting documentary. It's a muscle lady. A, a muscle killer tank. Muscly killer lady. Uh, number eight is Dharma Monster, the Jeffrey Dharma oh, story. Oh, we've not done this bit of this news. This is a bit of news that we've missed. Yeah. It's been renewed. Yeah, well, <laughs> but that wasn't the plan. No. I mean, this has taken a bit of a, a, a left turn. So Ryan Murphy's behind this. Yep. Who another person who just clearly doesn't sleep? Yeah, definitely not. Obviously, if he does, it's in Netflix's head this, office. This show, yeah, <laughs> told the story of Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, uh, Netflix announced that they have renewed this for a second season and a third, but they have renewed the concept. Yes, so it is now going to be an anthology show with it called focusing Monster. on a different monster. monster every time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fine, do it. Okay, who do you want one on? Um. <laughs> I don't, I'm not really... Uh, well, we were talking about Charles Manson, weren't we? Yeah, that big one. Yeah, Manson, big one. So let's have him. Manson, monster, the Charles Manson story. <laughs> yeah, Manson, monster. <laughs> Manson, monster. For some reason, we have to have the name Dharma in there twice, so we were assuming that's going to keep going. It's going to be called all sorts of random There was shit. a few... I don't know if I can repeat some of the comments in the Discord. There <laughs> were some names in there. Yeah, there were. Trump monster was my favourite. <laughs> yeah, I was laughing about that <laughs> for about two days. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Number seven in TV shows in the English language is The Bastard Son and the Devil Himself. Sure. Heard much about this? <laughs> no. It's sure supposed to be quite good. Um, I think it's about the devil. Cool. <laughs> number six, more news. Yeah. The Watcher is at number six. Also has been renewed. Does it have a... Is it like a cliffhanger? It, it doesn't have an ending. Oh, okay. So I think people are quite relieved that it's been renewed. But nobody was expecting it. It was released as a limited series. It was always only ever going to be one season. Okay. And they've given Ryan Murphy again another season of The Watcher. Oh, was that one of his? Yeah. No, I didn't realise. Um, yeah, the, the the true story of the... I guess it's been out long enough now I can yeah. give spoilers. The true story of The Watcher that The Watcher is based on, the guy was never caught. Right. So in the show, the guy's never caught. Keep going. It's, yeah. But it, was not, it wasn't left on a cliffhanger because it was never supposed to come back. Got it. But it is now coming back. Sorry. <laughs> but it Sorry. is now coming Sorry. back. Uh, number five is Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. I've now watched six of the eight of these. And? They're all batshit crazy, <laughs> but they're good. I watched the one with... I love that poster as well. The poster's it's brilliant. Like the cabinet is Guillermo's head. Yeah. And things are inside. That's a great poster. He comes on at the beginning of every episode and he's got this yeah. awesome cabinet. It's like the old it. Alfred Hitchcock yeah, it Presents. It's it? exactly what it is. It's a ripoff of that. Um, the one with Rupert Grintin I watched the other day was really good. Cool. Like proper good. The best one, probably. Um, I've got two left, so I'll keep going with it. I like to... It's not the sort of thing you can just throw on. Yeah. Like, I don't want to sit and watch, eat, watching it in my dinner or something. It uh, needs yeah, to be an event. We, a couple of times we've gone, oh, should we start it? And we're like, no. I'm like, I'm it needs to be an event already. moment. Yeah. I need to be able to sit down yeah. and watch it. But it'll be a good test for my new telly because it's oh, all going to be in the dark. So maybe when you've gone tonight, yourself. maybe I'll finish them both. So uh, I'll come back next week and let you know that. Love is Blind season three is at number four. Brilliant. Ever watched Love is Blind? Neither. Nor me. People at work are trying to get me to go on it. But that's not happening. I'm not going on it. <laughs> if you want that. Okay. <laughs> they, were t- they were debating the other day. You which... won't be able to talk about it. You have to sign. Yeah. Oh, I mean, 
Right, you'll get you talking to people at Netflix. Maybe I'm already going on it. Yeah. <laughs> they were yeah. debating which reality show I should go on. Okay. Was that the winner? That was the winner. I was, like, I was a bit insulted. I was like, people is are going to fall in love with me because the they can't. Is, no. it's people fall in love with each other without seeing each other. Okay. They sit in a pod on either side of this wall. Yep. And they can't see each other and they just chat. And eventually they propose to each other. I've, only, <laughs> I've seen a bit of it on Gogglebox. One guy proposed to a woman he'd never met that he'd been chatting right. to. But I was a bit insulted. I was like, so you think the only way I'm going to find someone is if I, they can't see me first? <laughs> it's like, you bastard. Uh, number three is From Scratch. Uh, romantic. This looks like it's set in... Tuscan yeah, type. That sort of area. Yeah, it looks very nice. Yeah, it looks fine. Number two is Inside Man. Is that David I, Tennant? Yes, I and Stanley Tucci. I okay. think I'm generally confused of how many things are called Inside Man. Yeah, there's a lot, isn't there? <laughs> There was that one with, was it Clive Owen in that? Yeah, Heist Denzel movie? Washington. Yeah. I think this was on the BBC earlier in the year. Right. Uh, but I think it was a co-production with Netflix or a, or a distribution deal with Netflix. And it's just arrived on Netflix, I believe. Cool. I believe. And then Manifest season four. Can I number mention one? this? Yeah. Because I read a lot about Manifest. Yeah. And obviously there's been a big campaign and it r- resulted in Netflix bringing it back. Yeah, Netflix have renewed, re- revitalized I, I think this is the dead. first... Yeah, Netflix is on it, season four. It's riding high in the charts. Hey, over here in the UK, yeah, you can only watch season four on Netflix. Really? I was like, well, that's weird. I'm not going to watch that then. Where's the rest of it then? Don't know. Don't that know what streaming service it's on. It must be somewhere. My brother's watched all of it, so it must be somewhere. Uh, but it is not on Netflix. I've watched. I watched the first season, and then it, there was a long time between season one and season two. I think maybe because of the pandemic or something along those lines really and i never went back to it because yeah. of that there was such a delay and then it got cancelled i think it's got cancelled twice i think yeah, it's I think been re- be right. i think it's been renewed by different streaming services twice but it's got a huge fan base and people love it yeah. 57.6 million hours this week just on season four i'm not starting on season four season one somewhere <laughs> in the world on netflix because it's in the chart yeah exactly but exactly. not in the uk cool there's your top tens good good job good job I think we've done a wave. Yeah? Yeah? Real talk? Oh, shit. I forgot about real talk. <laughs> shit. I forgot all about real talk. Should we do a real talk? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest again. Didn't put it on the socials. Yeah, right. Over I'm to me. I'm so Sorry. bad. <laughs> it's been a busy week. I've had a new it's TV. It's fine. I, uh, um, I completely forgot to put it on the socials. I apologize. So we may not have the longest real honest. talk in the history of real talk. No. But we've done quite a lot of talking so far. I'll go straight in there. Simple. What's your favourite non-human character in film or TV? Good question, I thought. It was one you came up with. I liked it. Do you want me to hit, hit up the Discord? Hit me some Discords. Uh, Wayne in the Discord is going for Baymax from Big Hero 6. Good shout. Big Hero 6 is a great film. I've actually seen that one. Yeah, so it's a lovely film. Ross Cook has gone with The Iron Giant. Yeah. And from Ready Player One. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, the the T-800 from Terminator 2. Is it still Ross? Yeah. Okay. And Pikachu. And then fourth, Koro Sensei from Assassination Classroom. Okay. I could not have a clue what that is. Uh, Smiley Tun in the Discord has gone with Marvin from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You can't argue Which with that one, really. Alex in the Discord has gone with uh, the Disney version of Robin Hood. You know, that... The fox thing. Little foxy man. Alex is a little foxy man. <laughs> yeah, that's a great show as well. I haven't seen that for years, so it's a really good film. Oh, it's a good movie. Uh, Chris from the Time Splitters pod has gone with Lando from Babylon 5. I never watched Babylon 5. I didn't ever watch I kn- Babylon 5. I knew 5 people either. who, like, did, and this thing's amazing, you've got to watch it. Yeah. I just never got around to it. Yeah. I didn't. I don't really even know much about it. It's, it's like posh um, Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> posh Star Trek. Nice. <laughs> Um, Isn't Star Trek just posh Star Wars? <laughs> That's going to get me cancelled as well. <laughs> I just want to be cancelled at the minute, apparently. Um, Sam in the Discord has gone with uh, Doug from Up. Yeah. Good shout. Uh, Good dog. Uh, Good doggo. Smiley Sun's coming back with a honourable mention of Wilson, the volleyball <laughs> from Castaway. I, d- I haven't really decided. I mean, I threw a couple in the Discord. I I, I quite like the Mogwai. 
You can't it's just cool design. You can't really go wrong cool. with Gizmo. It was one of the first things I thought of. Yeah, I don't know why. It just, it just kind of popped into my head. Yeah. Um, as soon I, as you put that up, I was like, yeah, that's a great show. I, I know, and then my my like current favorite is is Bandit from Bluey. <laughs> I don't know he's, what that is. He's just amazing. He's the dad of the family, and Bluey is What's amazing. Bluey? I cried at Bluey the other week. What is it? It's a t- it's a kids' TV show. Is it? They're an it's Australian. Like no, he's deeper than that, man. Oh, okay. It's a a family of dogs, right? So there's, there's Bandit, the dad. Yep. Uh, there's Chili, who's the mum, and then Bingo and Bluey, who are the two daughters. Okay. And it's the, the, each episode is like five, six minutes long. It's, yeah. de- it's, it's deep, man. Really? Yeah. Like what? What? How does it it's get just deep? The, like the it? themes of sort of well, some of the just just like kids playing, and so there's themes of loss and oh, right. you know family and moving away from home, and it's just it's, it's yeah, a brilliant I feel, show. I feel like I'm missing out on a whole world here. Yeah, good job. Growing you... up and <laughs> no, Bandit's great. Bandit's the dad. Yeah. Because are you going not with Bluey from Bluey? Are you going with the no dad? Bandit's the best one. Because he's, he's like, I want him to be my dad, <laughs> and if I was that good a dad, you'd be happy. Yeah, you're a good dad. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, so he was my current one. I don't, I don't know what my final choice is. Okay, Have you got one. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm I think so. Still think and just I think so. While you talk, I've got a, I've got a few honourable mentions. Is the Sharknado from Sharknado a character? That's yes, weather. It <laughs> it's still a weather. Still a character. It's, it's not, not human, I suppose. <laughs> it's not human, and it wouldn't. The film wouldn't be any good without it. So no, you're, you're picking right. some wind. No, I'm not. That was an honourable <laughs> mention. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to go. I think, I think it's Slimer. Oh, nice. I think. Nice. I think he's like pop culture icon of he's the He's on 80s. multiple franchises. As yeah, well. exactly. I think it has to be Slimer as the best. I did think about saying the smoke monster from Lost, but I thought you might punch me. Uh, I, you know, I nearly put that as a gift because I knew you were going to say <laughs> it. <laughs> plus, he ended chat. up being a human, so I couldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert for Lost there. Pennywise? Yeah. Great shout. But I, it has to be Slime. It's Slimer or Gizmo? I, I'll stick with Gizmo then because yeah, I, think... I, I don't know why he popped into my head, but I think it's just the look. And it is. Just... They're, they're just really cute and yeah, cool. I've got both. I've got Slimer pop figure up there and a Gizmo toy definitely there, so. belies our age. That does, doesn't it? <laughs> We're definitely sons of the eighties, yeah. aren't we? Good, good chat, good real talk. Good real talk. I enjoyed it. We'll we'll come up with a uh, topic for next week, and we'll we'll definitely get it on the socials as well as the Discord. Yeah, we need to get better organised with the socials. We we probably need to have this conversation off air, but our social Deal. Li- our social life is lacking. <laughs> That's why we present a podcast. <laughs> Any reason we get to see each other? Cool, right. Well, I think we've done a wave now. Have I missed anything else? Uh, no, just come back on Thursday and we'll talk about the giver. <laughs> we will indeed. Star studded second film of season eight, yeah. The Giver. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Cheers. Goodbye.